Welcome everyone, welcome if you are watching live with us uh, this morning or if you're watching online uh, or on our DVD another time, welcome to you as you gather here in the auditorium. We face another lockdown but our faith, our worship, our praise to God is never in lockdown for our God is the lion, the lion of of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Thank you. 
Yeah. 
going to lead us in prayer. Let's pray. And Lord, risen Jesus, thank you that you are coming on the clouds and kings and kingdoms will bow down and every chain will break as broken hearts declare your praise. Who can stop the Lord Almighty? Father God, we praise you for the eternal security and hope that is ours through trusting in Christ, who died and rose again to deliver us from sin and death and to reconcile us to you. Lord, our healer, we long for COVID-19 to diminish so that people throughout the world may be delivered and can recover from its terrible scourge, uh, causing death, sickness, economic, personal hardships. We pray, Lord, that you'd grant wisdom to governments, to health professionals, from leaders in all kinds of areas of society, Lord, to us as we seek to keep people, keep one another safe in these days. We face another lockdown. We pray, come Holy Spirit, come Holy Spirit, our helper, and we pray for for God things for grace things, for good news things, for our nation, for your church in this land, for our own lives, for our own discipleship and walk with you. And Lord, on this Sunday, it's the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church. Lord, here the prayers of your people around the world in the midst of intense suffering, please remind them, although weeping may endure for a night, joy comes in the morning, whether in this life or the next. Although, Lord, we're hearing those words locked down, we pray, Lord, that... uh, For us, the people of God, these will be days of of freedom because, Lord, you've set us free. Lord, we want to see these days of uh, of, uh, lockdown to be days of flourishing, days of freedom, days of being good news people, especially as we think about our front lines this morning. And those front lines may be even changing as we we think about them in the, the next few weeks. But Lord, we want to thank you that you are with us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, as uh, you can uh, see from uh, the uh, picture behind me, we're into, into uh, front line Sunday mode. And we're picking up the, the second in uh, this series of Frontline Sundays, and uh, the the theme is wherever we are. And uh, the idea of this theme is that um, uh, we would uh, uh, see that God is present in our everyday places, and these can be places where God is at work with us. Even the unexpected places can become places of encounter and transformation. 
And so we're connecting with uh, uh, the Bible this morning and Genesis chapter 28. And we're going to hear about Jacob who left um, uh, Beersheba and travelled towards Haran. At sundown, he arrived at a good place to set up camp and stop there for the night. Jacob found a stone to rest his head against and lay down to sleep. Then Genesis 28 verse 12, uh, we read, As he slept, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven. And he saw the angels of God going up and down the stairway. It's a great dream that he's having here. At the top of the stairway stood the Lord and he said, or it can read, and you may have in, the, in your footnotes as you look at this passage, there beside him stood the Lord and he said, and God spoke to, to Jacob, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather Abraham and the God of your father Isaac. The ground you're lying on belongs to you, I'm giving it to you and your descendants. Your descendants will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out in all directions to the west, to the east, to the north, to the south. And all the families of the earth we bless through you and your descendants. What's more, I am with you. And I will protect you wherever you go. One day I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I finish giving you everything I promised. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I wasn't even aware of it. But he was also afraid and said, What an awesome place this is. It's none other than the house of God, the very gateway to heaven. The next morning, Jacob got up very early. He took the stone he'd rested his head against and set it upright as a memorial pillar. Then he poured olive oil over it, named that place Bethel, which means house of God. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place and I wasn't even aware of it. Well, if you've got your frontline envelopes, you can tuck into your envelope and find uh, envelope number two. And in envelope number two, there's a, a, an outline sheet which has got our Bible text on it. There's some prayers on it. There's some questions on it. We will come back to some of that stuff. But as Jacob runs from the anger of his brother Esau, a very ordinary place becomes extraordinary. God meets him. It becomes a touching point between heaven and earth. When we go to our ordinary places in the name of Jesus, they become touching points between heaven and earth. God meets Jacob in an ordinary place. No place excludes divine visits. Jacob isolated on his own, sleeping, yet, yet God is there, God is here. And you may think that your workplace or your useful activity or useful activities in your 104 hours when we're not here doing church together are kind of a no-God zone. Yet in Genesis 28, for Jacob, God transforms an ordinary place into a holy place. And that builds faith into us um, today, that, that uh, we could experience something of the same, especially with a, another lockdown looming and the impact that will have. We could wake up to the reality, surely the Lord is in this place. Surely the Lord is in this place. For most travellers, the place was just a stopping off place. Somewhere handy to spend the night. But for Jacob, this very ordinary place becomes extraordinary. This is what we mean by front lines. The ordinary places that are touching places between God and his world. For a random ordinary place can be transformed by the coming of God and therefore be seen as a crucial place, a crucial moment, a crucial space where we and where others encounter 
the living God. We're going to see a short Frontline Sunday film, filmed before uh, social distancing guidelines, featuring ordinary places that become holy places. For the plumber, it's his uh, customer's house, for the grandma, a front room, for the businesswoman, the office, for the, for the um, uh, football coach, the pitch. When we go to our ordinary places in the name of Jesus, they become the touching points between heaven and earth. Ten hours a day. Six days a week. Whenever I'm needed. Every Saturday morning. I spend my time. In a place that matters to God. With people that matter to God. My front line. In the stresses. Successes. Problem solving. Tantrum resolving. <laughs> Laughter. Teamwork. Jokes. Tears. Boredom. Tension. Cups of coffee. Cans of coke. God is working with me. He helps me see what he sees. Put here by God. He knows the day ahead. This place is rich with possibilities. This is my front line. So what do we need to take away from this, this frontline Sunday? Well, I think uh, we need to uh, visualise the church existing both in being church together and church sent and scattered. Of course, these, these, uh, these COVID-19 days have, have, have caused us to put this into action in all kinds of different new creative ways of both how we do church together and, and our sent front lines. But that's how we exist, the, the church together and the church sent. Secondly, we need to see the ordinary of our, our front lines differently. And then we need to think about presence, pressure and purpose. And we need to take away perhaps asking God to help us dream about and see our front lines differently, just as Jacob dreams and sees things differently. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, surely the Lord is in this place. I wasn't even aware of it. That we could be re-envisioned for our 104 hours of sent and scattered living. There's more hours, but we spend the rest of them hopefully sleeping and resting. We're all full-time for God. Uh, whether... Uh, you're a Baptist minister, you're an evangelist, a nurse, a car mechanic, a, a bus driver, whatever your uh, work, your useful activity, uh, where you're sent, where you spend your time, that we are full time for God. When I trained at uh, uh, Spurgeon's College uh, for, for Baptist ministry, we had a great pastoral studies tutor. Uh, he, he was great because... Uh, uh, he marked generously. So uh, uh, I, I remember doing a Christian doctrine mock exam and getting 85% and, and being full of great joy until someone says, yeah, but that was generous Bob Mark in that. Um, you need to bring that down by half and then uh, you'll be more realistic. But the other thing about our, our pastoral tutor, Bob, was that he had years and years of pastoral ministry experience. 
And I, I, I used to lecture and share out of, out of real life story and experience. And uh, he, he was talking about visiting and engaging with people. Actually, I found the notes uh, th th this week uh, uh, when he was talking about this, and I wrote it down. Um, it's a very simple, obvious thing, but he, he said to us, make sure you find time to visit people in their workplaces. And I, I remember sitting there thinking, when I get to my first church, I'm going to do that. I'm going to find time to visit people in their workplaces. And, uh, and ever since then, I've tried to uh, find time to do that. In fact, three important things uh, 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 come out of that, that idea of not just visiting people, but here goes. Firstly, we need to value people. And I want to value people, not just in what they can do here together, although it's fantastic what we can do here together within the church together activities and ministries and, uh, and, and full programme that we have here in, in this church, but to value you as much in your sent 104 hours. Secondly, to, as he suggested, as I've tried to do, visit people in their workplace, said, I love it. To, to go and see people in their, in their setting. And so over the years, I've uh, been in uh, uh, boardrooms of department stores and in offices of newly formed small businesses, uh, in big uh, offices in London, in, 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 in sort of headquarters of businesses like Shell and, and the uh, Barclays Finance Centre, to a, to a stock room of a local spa shop, to the bar station, to the exhaust and uh, uh, tyre centre where one of our members was the, the manager, to a plant growing business, to strawberry picking fields, to, to small factories, uh, police stations, the, the body shop uh, uh, stock room, which has a very interesting pong uh, to it, to uh, football clubs, to schools, to hospitals, and the list goes on and on and on. And to be there and see there. And then to visualise the church. As every member, full time for God, both when we're together and then when we're scattered and sent. So often in our church staff prayers here, where it's just a, a few of us, but we will pray for the, as it were, the whole team. And we've got a massive team in this church because it's everyone, all of us. Scatter scent, doing the stuff of the kingdom week by week. And so for many years I've, I've used this idea of TTT, this time tomorrow or this time Tuesday or this time Thursday or if you're a, a night shift, not necessarily this time but a few hours on and just to hear from different people what they're up to. And we're going to hear from Sue who did record this a few uh, days previous. Of course, things will be changing because of lockdown and so on, but uh, Sue, she does loads of great stuff in the, in the life of the church here when we're together. Gift aid and finance team things. She's uh, set up and implemented our, our new church suite programme and some of us are still trying to get our heads around that, but she's done a great job with that. She's part of our home group and, and the list goes on. But she today shares with us about her 104 hours beyond being church together and Sam's going to press the right button so we're here hear from Sue. Hi I'm Sue I'm a human resources contractor and I'm currently working for English Heritage. Human resources work is about helping workers whether employees or volunteers to get the most out of uh, their time with the organisation and also helping the organisation to get the most out of its people. This might involve coaching managers or helping them to recruit the right people or engaging in conflict resolution. Currently, I work here in my study um, and I'm either working on my computer or in Zoom meetings or in telephone meetings with my colleagues and with managers. This has been the big change in the last few months. Previously, I would have been uh, in our Bristol office or out at one of our historic sites having these meetings. Whilst it's a shame to not be out and about with work, there have been plus sides. People have been great at supporting each other and making sure that even those that have been furloughed and so um, haven't been working have still felt part of the team. 
I work in a really fabulous team uh, and we've been using Zoom to have regular 11s, social catch-ups uh, over coffee and also uh, we've been having regular team quizzes which I enjoy but I'm really really bad at. Um, everyone has had to adapt a lot to the changing circumstances this year. In my workplace people have been great at responding to the fresh challenges but this need to change some of our working practices has also put pressure on people. It is a part of my job to be alert to this and to try and nip any emerging issues in the bud. When we're all re meeting remotely, it can be much more difficult to spot these issues. I do believe that God's purpose for me hasn't changed in these times. It's still to help to restore broken work relationships and to help to prevent those relationships from breaking in the first place. Please can you pray that I will be alert to issues that may be arising and that I will know what the best ways are to resolve those issues. Thank you. So our front lines, it's about us moving from the premises and the programme here, although the premises and the programme here is important, it's part of the way we exist as a church, but actually we move into your place, your premises, as it were, your programmes. Luke tells us about Jesus visiting Peter in his workplace. In Luke chapter 4, the location is the synagogue and the revelation of Jesus comes through the preaching of God's word. In Luke chapter 5, just move on a few verses, the location for further revelation about Jesus is a workplace. It's a fishing boat. The fishing boat of Peter after an unproductive, weary, frustrating night of work where, where they've caught no fish. Richard Higginson uses these words to uh, describe our front line uh, um, as the, the fall of humanity is, is seen in our, our workplaces and our working lives. Frustration and alienation, isolation, laceration, unclear vocation, exploitation, failure. And that's just to bring a reality that our front lines are not always easy places. In fact, uh, the last thing you want to be reminded of today is your front line. You're trying to escape from that. Front lines, the very wording front line can, can speak of a place that is difficult, that is challenging, that is even dangerous. But we are not there on our own. So we hold before God one another in prayer and in the fellowship of the Holy Spirit together. And we remember and we, we support one another. And we particularly remember support those for whom work and front lines seem very vulnerable or maybe very uncertain or maybe unavailable or very complex in these days. came across this prayer of David Parrish. Lord, grant me grace for the ordinary days, for my working days. Help me to appreciate the routine of life, the rush and bustle of getting ready for work. Give grace when meetings go on too long or when colleagues reject my ideas. Remind me to give you thanks when things go well. To be conscious of your spirit when decisions have to be made. Let me find time for you in a busy day to hear your voice. When problems crowd my mind, give me your peace. Make real the words. Take from our lives the strain and stress. Forgive us that disordered lies often do not confess your peace. God of the ordinary and the everyday, we give you thanks. Well, Encounter with God are transform transformative 
and they happen in the course of life with all the ups and downs as we see here in Genesis 28. Uh, I was talking to someone uh, one Sunday and we were having some coffee together and, and all of a sudden he said, I really hate my work. I really want to go to work tomorrow. I, I had a kind of a sideways move into a, an area a, 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 of work that I just didn't want to do and I kind of been forced to do it and uh, I really want to go to work tomorrow. I hate my work. I'm feeling guilty that I'm telling you that because you're looking at me. Uh, and uh, we played together over our coffee. Then I said to him, as you know, I love to come and visit people at work. And if you want to take me out for lunch as well at the same time, you can. But, uh, uh, but if, I come and see, if you like, I'll come and see you. So I'm not sure about that. And uh, I need to ask my manager and I have to get permission. But uh, thanks anyway. A couple of weeks later... He, he phoned me and said, you know, you said you'd come see me at work. Would you come? I've asked my manager, and unbelievably, my manager says that you can come in. Uh, and uh, we get you a security pass, and we... It's great to go and see his workplace. It's just to see the desk he works at, uh, and to uh, see some of the people he works with. And, and he, uh, in a creative way, introduced me. Here's my, my, my friend, Anthony, who... Uh, looks after the church I go to and, uh, and uh, come to, to see me. And it was great just to see him in there. And yes, we had some nice coffee together. Uh, and we found a, a corner in his room and I said, should we pray together? And he said, I'd love that. Uh, and into the, 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 the pressures and the, the situation and, uh, and, and, and the problem, we, we pray for the Spirit to come. And we invited the Holy Spirit to fall afresh. And it didn't make the job easier. And his manager didn't come in and say, guess what, I'm going to move you back to the job you really want. But it did give her a sense of new perspective. And he was able perhaps to ask some other questions about, are there things to learn here? And are, are there things to grow in here? And what about others that work here? And surely the Lord is in this place. Presence, pressure, purpose. It's the stuff of Jacob, uh, uh, Jacob's account in, in Genesis 28. And like Jacob, we could dream about uh, our front lines and see them as touching points between heaven and earth. As he slept, he, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven. Because that's what stairways do. I'm really grateful that... Uh, uh, the church give us a house to live in, otherwise we, we would be uh, living outside. And uh, I'm really grateful that uh, upstairs there's some bedrooms and uh, there's some beds that we can sleep in. There's a bathroom upstairs. And I'm really, really grateful that when they built the house, they put one of these in. Staircase. It doesn't quite go up to heaven like that, but it goes from the ground floor to the first floor because stairwell, the stairways connect... I know this is profound teaching here. They connect the ground to the next floor and the next floor to, to the bottom floor. And uh, we can go up and down them, just like the angels were going up and down the stairways that uh, Jacob dreamt about. So next time you go up or down a stairway, and some of you here are going to go down the stairway in a few minutes, you can think about this connection point. It's a picture Jesus takes for himself as being the way, as the link between heaven and earth. Could we be dreaming that uh, God is wanting to step down into those ordinary places, into those frontline places, into those workplaces, those leisure places, where we live in community places, wherever we are. And we'd hear those words that I am with you, that we'd wake up to the reality, surely the Lord is in this place. And I wasn't even aware of it. Lord, would you give us vision to see things like you do?
So in your envelope, number two of Frontline, you've got the, uh, the outline, what we've been looking at, and there's uh, some great questions in there to explore and to talk with others about, and I know how we meet together is changing and so on, but creative ways of carrying on a conversation. We're going to use the prayer a little bit later on, and you'll need to find the postcard. Uh, last time it was a coaster, wasn't it, you got as your, your scatter gift? Well, uh, today it's a postcard, and it has presents pressure, purpose on it, and there's a little thing we'll refer to in a moment as a, an exercise that you can do, and again, you can talk with others about that. Now, we were going to share uh, loads of uh, uh, information about November, because we had it all sussed out uh, <laughs> until yesterday, uh, uh, and our Prime Minister went on TV, and we thought, oh, everything's changing it again, and so there are some things that... Uh, will be changing. We're, we're not, you're not going to be able to come back in here for at least a few weeks again, and I'm sorry about that. I'm going to miss you. But we will be able to do the live streaming still and uh, online services, so that will be happening. But um, this makes our, our Zoom meetings really important, doesn't it? Yes. If you haven't worked out how to do Zoom yet, now's your chance to have another go. Ask somebody to help you, because we're going to be going back to a lot of Zoom meetings and phone calls and cards and other ways of communicating. So we meet at 6.30 every Sunday evening, um, breakout rooms so we can chat in smaller groups, and just to encourage one another yeah. um, before we have our supper That's right. Together. Yes. <laughs> well, not quite together, but well, we have it together. Yeah. But uh, yes... Please, please have a go at that. And if you're sort of, I'm never going to go on Zoom type person, well, maybe this second lockdown has sort of got you thinking. And it, it works. If it goes wrong, it goes wrong. It always but goes wrong. It always sort of goes wrong. My internet goes down funny and all that sort of stuff. It doesn't matter. It's a great way of seeing people and saying hello to people, waving to people. And if not, if you don't like speaking to the screen, just listen to everybody else. I tell you, there's enough people on there that can fill the time in. So you haven't got to worry about that. Now, this week we had an exciting new... Uh, series of events opening up. We are going to be able to run this one, aren't we, for it's, seniors? It's still going to go ahead. If there are any other changes, you'll be contacted. So yeah. come along. If you're not comfortable about coming along now, that's absolutely yeah, fine. Just that. let Alex or Kelly know. Um, yeah. Have a word with either of them if you've not got your place, if there's some movement around. Yeah. Um, also look on the Seniors Facebook page. That's great. It's regularly updated. Lots of encouraging verses um, and things yeah. to do, and there'll be updates on this event. So... Join the seniors Facebook page. Yeah, don't be put off by that word. It. Don't be oh, put off by that word. You're it. on it. Am I on it? Oh, well, I don't know why I'm on it. Well, as I do know I'm on it. But, um, yeah, you could be a senior. Uh, but if you're, well, what's a senior? Sort of retirement age-ish. I don't know. That, that sort of age. But uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a lovely stuff going on there. And we're going to have to rejig slightly. You never know. We might be able to do the, um, oh, no, the December one's a bit. <laughs> anyway, we're, 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 we'll let you know. Um, uh, that, that we're not going to do the, the gathered Holy Communion service. We'll have to do uh, we'll have to, on Zoom we might again. do something on Zoom. We'll let you know about that. See, as I told you, we had it all sussed out until <laughs> yesterday. Oh, this has been great because uh, we Mosaic Church. We've not been able to gather together because uh, we do Mosaic in quite an interesting. It's full on together, sort of moving around the place, meetings. 
But the team has done a great job, and Jane's led the team brilliantly over the months, really. And we've been... You know, up there is a picture of uh, the Harvest goodie bags that went out. And um, treat or treat, uh, celebrating Jesus, the light of the world, and those bags have gone out to families. So keep praying for Mosaic Church uh, and that. And we're going to have to work out, again, how we're going to do that in the next few weeks. Uh, and then we had baptism last week, and you just said it was the moment. I said that was the day you should get baptized. <laughs> but that's not the only lockdown. day. <laughs> yeah, but there's so going to be more days. that one, but as soon as we can open up again. Uh, but we're going to move that into December somehow. And I love doing baptism in Advent at Christmas Day, even if we do it at Christmas Day, I don't know. That'd be great. Oh, well, great we, we can do gifts. something. So we, just keep in touch with us about baptism. But if you'd like to find out about baptism, we can do that. And you can, we, can, we can do that over the telephone or over Zoom, or somehow we can do that. I'll speak through your window. I'll do anything to explain about Believer's Baptism to you. So if you say, yeah, I, I, I saw it last week, and, oh, this lockdown, oh, don't let that lockdown stop you. Come and speak to us. We, we can get you ready for baptism. We'll have the pool open as soon as we can. Now, we, so we're going to live stream from here, because uh, in the first lockdown, we used my iPad and a broken microphone, and we did a lot of stuff from home. And at home, you occasionally would hear or see uh, guide dog puppies appearing. Yeah, the dogs miss being on the screen, yes. so they asked but, if they could be included. But um, part of your 104 hours is to do puppy walking. And in one of our films we did a few months ago, young Barrett had arrived. He was a little German shepherd, but he's now a big... He's nine months now. And, and he looks like that. big, but he's very gentle. And part of my... 104 hours is puppy walking, and I have to take them to cafes so they can get used to it. So I spend a lot of time drinking coffee. So here I am, um, having a coffee outside, teaching Barrett to be good, and uh, yeah, having having a good time. He's really good in cafes. He is. So just in case you're wondering, they're, 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 he's made his appearance back on, on, on film and uh, uh, today. Now we're going to hear from Lizzie, who uh, is a member of our church, and then Jeff, who's part of the church here, and they do great stuff when we're here together. They're Two really wonderful, gifted people who pour effort and energy into church together stuff, but also they have a life like you do beyond being together here. And we're going to hear from Lizzie, who is, and uh, here's her job title, personal assistant to the director of infrastructure at the West of England Combined Authority. And... Um, and Jeff has one similar to that as well. We're going to hear <laughs> from them both now. Hi, I'm in my spare room, and this um, I'm currently using as an office because I'm working from home. Uh, this room is really nice to work in in the mornings because it gets really nice light. Um, the issue with working from home is one can easily get distracted with home life, um, or alternatively, working be really busy and you can be tempted to work sort of long hours, which is um, not good. I think God is calling me to take better care of his environment. Um, I am interested in moving into a career in project management and so um, prayer for God's guidance and trust that he will um, put me in the right direction would be great. I'm uh, Jeff Peacock. I'm uh, retired now. I've spent 40 years working in telecommunications in various areas, but now I'm working as a, a sort of a shop manager, stroke assistant, stroke dog's body, um, just selling a whole range of bric-a-brac bits and pieces to the general public to support our charity, Changing Lives Charity, uh, which is uh, been based here in Clevedon and supports people who are in need of uh, support um, in terms of work, in terms of uh, any aspect of their life that they need help in, we will, we will try and support them in it. Now this shop here is what we call our thrift shop, it's really where we provide things that um, uh, really we can't sell in the other shops or don't go so well in the other shops or we've got an oversupply of various items. So we bring them here to our thrift shop. We run it purely on volunteers. We don't have any paid staff here at all. 
but we only open one day a week, which is on a Thursday market. We'd like to do more, but we need more volunteers to come along. I mean, we've got a fantastic group of people who help us at the moment, but uh, you know, they have other demands on their time, so they can't always make it. And sometimes, you know, we're just down to two people. So the more people we can get, the more people who can come along and volunteer, and we'd love to have you. So do come along and speak to me or one of the other other colleagues, and you'll find it's a really lovely social environment to uh, to spend your time. As you um, as you may be aware, uh, our charity, uh, Change Your Life Charity, is a Christian-based charity. So we very much like to promote our Christianity and everything we do. And the chance we get here in the shop here is because we it's so popular. We get probably a hundred plus people in during our, our day, there's an opportunity for us to witness to them as to what we believe and what we think is our purpose in life. Uh, we have a whole range of supporters who help us. They don't have to be Christians to come in here to help, but what we do like to do is to engage with the public, engage with our volunteers, and show them that you know th th there is a real purpose to our life and a real desire to, uh, to serve God wherever we are and what's interesting is that you get into so many conversations with people conversations about their life conversations about their circumstances and they really do open up to you so it's a good opportunity to uh, to listen and that's a very important skill is to listen and to make time for them that's the important thing is, is to, to show them that you're not just interested in taking their money but you're interested in what they are as a person and where they are and what they're doing with their life and, and how you can perhaps show them there is a, a, a better way. In terms of prayer, uh, we, we usually ask um, for prayer in our home group as well, but the sort of things that we want prayer for is that we perhaps get more volunteers along, that we have a day when we do get the opportunity to, uh, to contact with people and, and to witness to them that um, you know, the weather's decent and we get a good footfall, um, that we make some decent money for the charity and that, and that you know, we can support more people because we, we get that money. And really just to give us the courage, um, if there is, God does give us an opportunity to be prepared to speak out about our faith and say what we truly uh, believe and what God has done for us in our lives. So there's some more stories of how people are using their, their sent hours of, of ministry and, and, and a mission out into the world, wherever we are. Now, uh, as I said, you've got your postcard. Uh, and it's very simple. You, on the back of it, it has, you put your front line or front lines. There, there could be a whole list of stuff. Um, uh, and you put that on there. And then... It's got those three words about presence, just as Jacob experienced the presence of God, Jacob under great pressure, sorts of pressures that we're under, and purpose, just as God revealed a, a bigger purpose for, for Jacob. There's, there's a bigger purpose than just turning up to work. Uh, even if we feel, oh, I've got to go to work, actually, there, there's more. I've got to do these things this week. There's a greater purpose uh, um, to be worked out as we um, allow God into our lives and to God work, to work through our lives. And so you could be looking at that and thinking about that. And in a moment, the, the, the band are going to lead us in a, a song. It's a great prayer for, for the Holy Spirit to be at work in our lives. But before we do that, we're going to use the prayer. It's on the sheets. Uh, and look at the questions on the sheets. But let's do the, this prayer. And Joe's going to lead us in this prayer. And then the group will lead us in this song. And as we're doing that, perhaps have a look at these, your postcard about the presence pressure purpose and start to fill that in and put some words down on that. Let's pray together. Lord of all creation, thank you that our everyday, ordinary places matter to you and we make a difference there. We offer to you the places where we live, work, study and play. May we serve you and bear witness to you wherever we are this week and may we know your presence with us in these places. Amen. There's nothing worth more 
could ever come close Nothing can compare You're our living hope Your presence I've tasted and seen Of the sweetest of loves So as we go to our front lines, presence. How do you experience God's presence with you there? Pressure. What is a pressure point there for you? Purpose. What might be God's purposes for you there right now? So your prayer is... And Lord, as we move out into the rest of this week and onto those front lines, may the Father who loves you, the Son who sends you, the Spirit who empowers you, be with you and bless you wherever you are, whatever you do, whoever you're with, To his praise and glory. Amen. Speak to me, my heart responds.